G'day, how you going? Are you Annapolis here, you're a colleague guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Before we get started, I wanna put the size of the canvas up there, just like that. And also, what I'm gonna use in this video, the colors will be going up the screen there. I'm not using many in this one. I'm gonna try and just use your three primaries, showing you the beginner and then an advanced beginner what you can do with your primary colors, all right? So without any further ado, get on right over here and let's get right into it, all right? So here's my canvas. I've got it taped to my backing board here for filming purposes. And I'm just going to use three colors, which are your primaries, which is your blue, yellow, and red. For the red, I've got quinacridone magenta. I've got a yellow ochre. And I'm gonna use cerulean blue because that's my go-to sky color. I love this color. Plus we'll have some white and black. So what I wanna do is get a sky on there. So we're gonna have a sky. I want the sky kind of uh, and zig zagging out like that over our head. Okay, on my canvas, I've just drawn out an outline of where I want me trees, me mid-ground, me horizon line, and the foreground and the sky. I want to start with the sky first, then we'll come forward. So down here, I've got some soft-bodied titanium white just out of this big bottle here. That's the soft-bodied stuff. In me tube, you see here, that's the the thickest structure. That's the white I use for the color white in me paintings. But for this one here, I like to make up me own primer for the sky. So I'll get that and some retarder. And what's retarder, you're asking? That retarder is gonna slow down the drying time of this paint and then also help slow down the colored paints that I put on top of it. So I use this as a primer for me acrylic paints to get some beautiful blending happening. So I know where me sky is there. I'm gonna just crisscross this into the footprint of the canvas there. I'm not worried about painting it, dilly-dallying around. I wanna get it to there, okay? Crisscross it on. It's all thick, wobbly and bloggy and gluggy and munty, okay? Get it on there first, just like that, everywhere you want, in the corners, a bit beyond. Then come to the tip of this putter on a brush. Look at it, the tip's empty now. There's not a lot of paint on there. I wanna stroke this left and right just to get it an even thin film. So what I wanna do using these three colors is mix up the sky colors. I've got the blue, but I also want some of the quinacridone magenta and some of the yellow oxide to create a bit of a yellowy, orangey vibe in the bottom of the sky there. And we'll get some gray clouds as well. So I wanna mix that color up first. So I've already got it ready when I'm ready to put that color on. So pretty much that color there. And now I wanna use the Cerulean blue for the sky color. I want it very pale. I don't want it bright blue sky. I also want to get a bit of gray just to, because I'm going to need it in there. Okay. Now I've got me putter on a brush. I want to get this blue and the gray and mix up a cold overcasty evening type of sky color. This will lighten up when I put it onto that white paint onto the sky there. So I'll start at the top. See how that blue, I don't know if it looks in the camera, it's got that gray vibe going onto it. I'm coming across the top of the canvas and this putter on a brush don't muck around. Now, if you want the Patreon's version of this video, Click the link below, hit the Patreon, become a patron if you're not already one, and watch the patrons version of this video. It's totally different. Bits of laughs and giggles and behind the scenes in there. Patrons get extra content. Now I'm gonna stroke this left and right before it dries, getting it all the way across, crisscross it here, crisscross it here. And get it all the way across, down to the horizon line there. Okay, got that. Now I wanna get the other colors into the sky before it's too late. I'm gonna pick up this color I mixed here. Where's my horizon line? About there. I want to come just maybe across here. Get it on there. That paint's draggy, wet. I want to kind of just come up like that and with this softer, smaller brush and put it on, pushing it in and killing the hard, rough edges. Just softening it down with this brush. Just like that. And I've created some kind of 
I don't know, what would you call it? Distant weather or something? I'm so sorry, the camera wasn't on. I've put some little clouds here on top of that orange. And over here, I've left bodies of nothing in there, openness. I grabbed my blending brush and I've blended them in, okay? Done the same over here. Now I've added some gray to that because it was a bit bright. I'm going for that over the head look, leaving bits of nothing within the body of this cloud, like that. Hopefully my paint will still stay wet long enough for me to blend this in. Then I grabbed the corner of my brush and I blended that, sweeping that, and now I'll get the next big cloud over our head. Okay, so I'm gonna come from here. Big, buffy clouds smoking out to nothing. Bit more over here. Got bits of red and all sorts in there. There's a big chunk of paint there. I better be careful. I'll sm smear that everywhere. I don't know where I want it to be. And I wanna just softly blend this into the sky. Now I gotta hurry because I did a lot of filming with the camera off and my canvas is trying to dry. It's quite a warm day here, so I'm kind of rushing this a little bit, but we'll still get there. Okay, now what I will do is just grab the titanium white from the tube, not that craft paint that I used earlier on. And I wanna just gingerly, let's say this cloud here, get some bits of white within it just to make it stand out. I will grab another blending brush and you'll just see what this yumminess does. I call it yumminess because it makes your clouds look a bit more yummy. Pretty much creating the dimension of the cloud with this white. It just adds the, the thickness and the 3D look to it, I feel. Being acrylic, of course, I only paint in acrylic. I'm just getting a bit over here now. Just trying to find the vibe looking in my camera lens. It's not, to, it's not the way I would have liked it, but it's still good enough. We'll get something on the top of this, just along here. Pull it down, leave the top there, but pull that white down into the cloud body. And obviously this cloud here, we need some kind of, oh golly, put a bit too much on there. See how silly it looks, but when you sit it down the right way, you kind of get some Incredible, I don't know, what have I always said? Bullshit on your canvas. Look at that. I don't like, see I'm looking in my thing, I could see a big blob there, I don't like it. So I want to cloud your fire that, so it looks a bit more cloudy. I just want to fix the top of this as well just because I feel it's losing it. If anything, I'm trying to keep the bottoms of these a bit darker. Now I'm just getting a bit of yellow ochre on its own. And under some of this, I'm hitting it with the light. And then my blending brush, blend it in. Wipe the brush and blend the top of it into that cloud body. So we're getting some kind of light hitting these clouds here. Try and stay off the blue, go into the body of the cloud with it. I'm gonna just lighten that a bit because it looks a bit thick. Okay, what I'm doing here, these billowy bits, I'm just kind of coming up with a little bit of this paint in the brush, just to kind of 
carry on like the light from down below shining up under the belly of these clouds here. Just because after looking in my lens, I feel it can do with some of that vibe going there. It's just, I wouldn't mind getting some, let's just see if this is gonna work. I just want some brighter value in the sky here. I looked in my camera and I'm just seeing if this is gonna do anything or is it a total waste of time. I know it's not the sun or the moon, but I wanna just see if that's giving some kind of other element within the sky I can use. It's too wet. Scoot it down and I really wanna sit it into that blue. Sit it into that blue. You don't have to do this, I just wanna add it because I feel it's a bit too blue here. So you don't have to add this if you don't want to. Now advanced or beginners can paint this painting. You do your version of it in an advanced way or my way or a beginner's way where you do less detail. Okay, grabbing the magenta and the blue, I want to mix up a dark value for the trees. I want to grab my filbert brush because that's my go-to brush for my trees. And in here we've got, I don't know, we'll come along here, about there, and we're gonna come up. See, my sky's a bit wet. I'm gonna stop the camera and dry that. So I've dried it, I wanna just block this in real quickly with this brush and get it the, the footprint I want. Right, I've got it the footprint I want. Now it's too much like that. I wanna give it a bit more of a a hump here coming over there we go and we'll go a bit higher now i'm going to use the brush and start painting it the shape that i want i want this here coming out a lot of air in between the tops there so it's not a solid edge i don't like solid edges on me trees out there i always like them broken up a bit so i'm going to build this to a degree where it doesn't have a solid edge. Now see here, now you can see a bit of a solid line coming there. That's what I was talking about. Do I want it? So I'm gonna distort it. Distort it. There we go, I'm happy with that. It's not too bad. I've given that a dry. I'm gonna mix up some of the blue and the yellow ochre there to get me green colour. This will be me base colour for the trees. Get this on the top of those shadows, so the shadows are kind of like underneath. This is kind of like a grey, dull colour, but... I'm kind of bowing them into the centre. Somewhere around here will be my flat area, so this isn't going to be all standing up trees, there will be some flatter areas. Now I'm going to wash this brush, dry the canvas and put the next green on. So I'm grabbing the yellow ochre again and my blue to mix a green, get a green going, you'll see the difference from that green to this green. And you'll see some cadmium yellow there. What I'm going to do is get some of that into here to give it a more of a, not too much though, you don't want it too vivid, more of a greeny green. Now this is going over there, coming down. These are a simple tree to do when you practice them and they'll just give your paintings your look. I love doing these filbert trees. Just with what's in your brush, grab a heap of the yellow and lay it in your brush just so you can get some lawn. Keep going and going and going until you're happy with the lawn colour you're looking for. And I want to come, I'll come from over here, and I want to come, and this can create the shape of your land out there. Come towards the darkness there, bring it over from there, 
stop, reload your lawn and bring it into the painting. Now what I want to do, to see there you see stop starting here, come all the way, all the way through, get rid of them. Now what I want to do is grab some of the yellow, just in the brush, get it over here. There's enough of this old stuff in the brush and the yellow, a bit more yellow, just to highlight it, just so we can get some other light hitting that lawn. And I want to just, that's wet, so I might need to dry it. I'll see how I'll go, I'll get by. And I'm just putting a lighter yellow green over that green. There we go. Grab some of the brighter stuff and just find your areas like, and just start sitting on top of that with the tip of your sharp, I'm using my filbert brush, and you can add some detail. You can use this brush or something else that's going to give you that vibe of lots of intricate grass shrub foliage detail on top of that solid colour there. You don't want them too thick and spaced out. You want them to find that right consistency of size and clutterness. Otherwise they could look a bit wrong. Cover up any ifity effity bits you don't like. Now what I've gone and done, I've got some sap green in the cadmium yellow again, just to turn the lights on in this sap green, just to get the colour green on those trees that we want to see. Everything I've put on there so far is the background colour. You might have to muck around with it until you're happy. Let me have a look. Get a bit more yellow in that. See, I put a bit on there, I couldn't quite see it. Now I'm going to go again and I'll have a look in the monitor with this one and just see if I could see this or is it clashing? It's not too bad. I'll get a little bit more yellow though. Okay, now we'll highlight this where I want it to be highlighted. Coming down the foliage. You can see this dark area now. What we've got to do is try and get these to come over it like this. So we'll come from there and come over like that leaving yeah I've put a bit more yellow in it that's a little bit better I could see that I think can I have a look at that that's a bit better check out my patron if you want the patrons version of this video hit the patron link become a patron and there's a patron's version of this video. It's a bit more raw. Thrills and spills within it. Okay, still coming down here. I'm bowing it into the center of the painting. That purpley color has mixed a beautiful depth. Leaving pockets of darkness there, clumps of brightness is that pocket there okay i feel this could have something coming down in front of it like that after looking in the monitor and now i want to highlight so grabbing whatever's left in your brush and some more cadmium yellow and let's pinch a bit of white ink your brush up a bit and we just want to gingerly gingerly highlight what we put on there okay so we got our green greens there greens happening let's see how we go with a bit of light just gingerly scattering down over this and if anything the light sits over the dark areas i want to have a look there's no clashing going on. It's not too bad. I feel I could have, would have, should have done this before I put the lawn on. That way I could have done the lawn a different value green so there will be no clashing because I feel some of this could be clashing with the lawn. Let's bring something down here. Light, you don't want big thick blobs of this. See, I'm trying to go light. 
and just dance it over that dark shadowy bit there. This big clump here getting hit with light. Keep looking in your monitor, your camera lens, it's the best way to squint your eyes to look at a painting and see where you do and don't need extra bits and bobs. I feel I've got a bright blob there and here. So I'm gonna grab this darker color here. Gingerly stamp it back down in that, but you'll have to dry it. I haven't dried it, but you've got to dry it. I'll get away with it, hopefully. And it's just, now just to give this a bit of realism, I wanna put some shadow casting, is that dry, on the ground. So we'll get a shadowy color, which is our gray. Let's grab a gray. Um, so simply grab a gray and your greeny colour, which is over here, but that's dry. So I'll grab a grey and this colour here and I'll, I'll greyify it. But where are we? A bit more. And with your shadows, I'll, I'll put that there on the mask and tape. Could be a bit darker, but anyway. Um, let's just see under there. Um, where are we? Grab bits and bobs and just see bits of shadow here. So it looks like we've got shadow well, I'll grab some of this. You just want it very dry brush strokes. So you can see here that, that grass is dry. But when you put shadows in areas, that kind of gives it a bit more realism. Now, I've just looked in the monitor. That is a bit light. And I just want to pick up some of this. I'll let that dry and darken that up. But see, I'm scattering shadow from the base and out onto the lawn a bit. See here, this colour's a bit muted to that purpley colour, so I will pick up some of that purpley colour just to transition those two. So it's all about taking your time, analysing and getting things done. It doesn't have to be done quick. So this colour here, which I've got now, and we're going to transition that as well out just so it's not a sudden transition. Did okay, down here I've got burn umber and grey. I'm mixing up a grey brown. So what I want to do is get a grey brown here, which is dark, medium, and then I'll come over here and mix a lighter value, okay? Get a little bit of water on that. So I've mixed up the dark, medium and light out of the grey and the burn number. I want to get the burn number first on its own because I want to base it in with that colour first. I'm looking here, I'm looking here, I'm going to grab my mal stick and I want to come from about here, let's say about here actually. I want a tree just scooting right out. I've got to, I'm using a little flat brush here and I want to get this trunk up here now that sky is get up here a bit more about that wide at the top and gingerly come down a little bit wider as you come down this is the dark value of our trunk so we've got the trunk there why don't you put another one over there where there what here yeah all right okay we've got another one there before we put our foliage on I want to pick up the medium color so we'll come along, is it, how wet is it? Am I going to be able to? Just come around like that. Now the trunk is a bit wet, so I'm going to have to dry it. You'll subtly see this light a bit on there with the dark. Where are we? I'll get it around here. This one over here, this is the middle colour, right along that edge and taper it out into the middle, leaving bits of the dark there. Now if I didn't dry this, it'll be mixing up and turning to mud and you'll be getting frustrated. And then simply grab, wipe your brush and then grab the lighter value that you mix, which was the more of the greyer value and simply and gingerly easily get some of this in there 
Where are we? I want a lot of it down here. Coming across the middle there. I want to come down the side of this trunk here. Jingle jangle that on top of the medium colour so there's no line. Any lines distort them. You don't want lines in nature. Out there like that. Now I've got a forest green down here. I'm going to just get it inky enough just to put in my palm tree leaves. So I'll grab my mouse stick and I'll start with this one. Hopefully it's dark enough and I'll just come up and let it scratch out like that. See how easy that was? It's nice and dark. Forest green's quite dark I feel. Get another one coming from about here. Now don't make them all the same size because some are going that way and this way. They're not all sideways like a flat pressed flower. We'll get one coming down there. There we go, that was quite easy. And we'll get another one coming up like that. Another one there. Another one maybe And like I like to put these little scragglers in there, there we go. Um, this one here will... Just try and get them random and, I don't know, nature-fied. That one come right off the painting, that one. And then like I've said in many of my palm tree videos, make the middle a bit busy. I mean, you can get more detail than this. I'm just grabbing some of that quinacridone magenta with that forest green, just to get a darker vibe of it. And have a look at your prongs and work out where you just need the darkness, which I feel is in the guts. Just somewhere around there. Just like that. Now with the forest green simply use that same green and i want to use some of the cadmium yellow just to lighten it up so it'll be a different yellow green than what's downstairs if you've got a picture of a palm tree you can use that as a reference i don't know why i stuck these in here but i've gone and done it and we'll try and get something Coming from the darkness. I don't want to make it flat. I want to try and give it some dimension if I can. So what I might do is just put something straight over there like that. Something you weren't expecting. Leave that dark reddish tinge that you put in there. There we go. And now grabbing 90% of the yellow on you. I've wiped the brush, 90% of yellow. You just want to find, I don't know, let's see. Less is more. That one there. I made a mess of that. I'll have to um, just get the dark again and simply go over it. There we go. And what we can do, I'm going to get that shadowy colour. I'm going to, let's say the shadow's coming here, I'm going to just shadow that over these foliage like so. And then kind of get some kind of distorted shadow there. Look, I'm just making this up. It's something there. I'll get some shadow going here. Just so it's like casting shadow onto this. 
and some of it can be on the ground as well. Just distorted. There we go. This one over here is not the best, but this one's all right. I think I'll just join that up to there to make it a bit more believable. Okay, what we're going to do now is put our water and some foreground underage there. So I've got some retarder again in that soft bodied white paint. Careful of that land there. Let's get this on first. And we'll get this to our horizon line. I could have taped it up. Could have, would have, should have taped it up. And you want to jingle this to your bank there like so. Jingle it to your bank just like that covering it up and then come away all the way in here. What I will do is I'm going to get a bit of elephant tape and put right across here just so as I can get me horizon in. There we go. So what I want to do is get that ridge of paint off there away from the tape. Get it away again. This is just how you can fix things up. Get it off your brush. So I'll put it down here. And now I'll come to the brush. I mean, not the brush, the, the tape a little bit. And I want to push that into the grass there. Now, I haven't got this white paint right against the tape because the actual color will go against there. If I do that from past experience, I will have a white line there. I've got some turquoise here. I've just wiped the brush. I'm just going to go for turquoise colour because that's where I want my water. Now, for a bit of luck, I don't have a white ridge of paint where my water is. Now, this water has to fade away to the ground colour. So I'm going to come to about there and stop. It's nice and dark out there. I want to get the brush on its edge and filter it into that grassy area there. Get it all the water colour into there. It could go lighter if you want. See how easy you can control this with this putter on a brush. Message me in the messages below if your comments below if you want me to send you this brush and my blending brushes out. They're 45 US dollars to this date. I like doing this. Just darker values out there. Wipe it off and water fight. There we go. Now when I take that tape off, we do not have a white ridge of paint there anymore. Clean my putter on a brush, just grab the yellow ochre. I'll use this colour. You can have any dirt colour. I'm going to go for this colour. And get it down the bottom here. Push it on, get the darker colour on there. And let it start coming light into your water. And bring it up here and there. Like that. Now you can see by this painting, it's a bit of a weird layout. But I'm just making it up as I go. I have seen something around with these sort of elements in it. So I've tried to remember those and just put it in. There's me sand color. Now you see your sand color, it kind of fades into that water. You can even probably watch this, have a bit of a, if it's gonna work. No, I don't wanna muck around with it. Get some dark blotches out there. There's our water. Now we see how this, this looks a bit weird here. It looks a bit floating. We need some darkness there, some big time darkness. So for that, I've got me, Burn umber and this quinacridone magenta again. I'm gonna grab that burn umber and I wanna make a dark color of that. Up here, and I wanna come from the top side and kind of get some kind of darkness against me greens there. Now you tell me in the comments below what you think of this painting, if you like it, if you think it's not, and how did you find me? How did you find my channel? if you're new here. If you're a regular viewer, thanks for tuning in and watching. And if you're a member, big shout outs to you when I see you in my lives. And if you're not a member, hit the join tab below. Come on, let's get this. Um, what the, me rocks, me rocks. So I want some gray, dark gray rocks. So I'm gonna use that color. Let's just say here and we'll put some kind of, I don't know, let's 
just go for it. I haven't dried this yet, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of smear this in. How wet is that? I might have to dry it. And I'm simply getting the dark vibe for the rocks here. Some, so what I'll do, the, the bigger rocks are at the front here, so I've got bigger vibes there, but big areas, and then lighter out there, lighter out there, where the rocks are, that's where they're fading away. Look at how simple this is, I'm gonna show you. Look, some more light ones there. You just need the shadows underneath them. There, smaller ones out here. Get this all gingerfied up into there. Might put something there, because I, I tore the paint up. Now I can grab my grey now, bring that over here and mix up some grey because these rocks are going to be grey. So we need them mixed up with that sort of grey, where is it all? Grab the black. Oh, too much black. Now we'll grab some more grey. There we go. That's a middle tone one, I can use that. Start out here and get your little ones that you've got, but sit all this on top of that shadowy stuff there but make your individual rocks from it okay and then when we highlight these they could would and should look not too bad a bit of luck it'll make people go i like that i'm just getting all these small ones first and then i'll start with here just hang on let me finish this bit here there we go now the one there one there, you just make them in front of each other. They look mumble jumble at the moment, but when you finally finish them and you know how to do them, they're quite good looking in your paintings. They give it that charisma vibe, I feel. Yeah, they're sort of looking all oh, too much on there. They're kind of not too bad, I suppose. And then look at it, analyze it. If you feel you need darker vibes in there, by all means, add the darker vibes. Coming over here, we're gonna grab the white. Now, just mix what's in my brush into the white. And then I've got some pure white there, just in case I need it. And we wanna kind of do a few, and then look in your monitor. That one's behind, because this one's gonna come in front of it, see? That one's there, this one's in front of it. Remember that, what's in front and behind. Don't put them all side by side. That's not too bad. I'll get away with it. Try and get rid of the uniform patterns and make it look more nature fiable. And you pretty much got to get these lighter values on top of the darker ones. What I want to do is see here, get some of it off the brush, and just gingerly come in between, where's that paint gone again? Took too much off the brush. And really, come on, get some darker points in there, because you really, have a look and see where you might have lost a lot of your darks, okay? Scraggle the dark bits in there before we highlight it. Leaving that other darker vibe we put in there early, otherwise you'll mute it up and turn it into snot. Now we'll just simply highlight it. So to highlight them, I'm gonna get a bit of the white, which has got the gray in it, and just kind of find the bigger ones. And I'm going from the top right side and casting over the actual stone that way, okay? Sorry, the top left side. Don't have to do all of them, just... If you get carried away, you'll end up doing all of them. See, so just from the top left and casting it over to the top and the left side, bringing it down to the right bottom side. I mean, I, I try and show a bit of everything on my channel here. If you look at over 500 videos I have here, you can just see the different varieties of paintings I teach beginners and advanced. Now we simply want to sink them under the surface of the water and the best way I find to do that, get yourself some glaze, okay? 
and I want to grab some white. I'll grab a bit of this. You don't need much in it. Look, a little bit of white and a ton of glaze. Okay, too much of this will hide what you're trying to sink. You want to be able to see through it, but still see this at the same time. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my bullshit stick so I can get some nice straight confident lines across lot just straight across and you don't want to rub this in because then you can grind it down to buggery and turn your painting into absolute full-on snot all right so i'm going to come and then just hit the painting off hit it here and there i might add a little bit of blue just to that because um the highlight in that might get smeared so let's see what this does go here again I'll come up across here yeah that's all right we've got blue so kind of stagger this surface of the water over your stones there come right across them there we go right across them on and off right across one go at a time if you can boom I've in my earlier days I've rubbed this in and it digs the living buggery out of your paint I want to grab my dagger brush and some titanium whites and all I want to do is just put an edge to my water here and there so like I don't know very when water hits something you see the light hitting it turns it white and just get some water hitting the bank there feather it out into the water and onto the bank there along here this rock can be above ground so we can have water dancing around that something about here just to break it up i'll just sign this and whack a frame on it and see how she looks There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got some tropical land, rocks underwater kind of vibe going. The sky's not too bad. I know you can do it. Well, I hope you got something out of this exercise. I had a lot of fun doing it. Be sure to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine. It's a beauty, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.